people of the internet, my name is Mia Cotton, and welcome back to Seduce Me the Atome. Last time, we were finally introduced to our Incubi boys. That is what I'm going to call them now. That sounds like the sounds like the name of a, of a boy band, and they kind of look like a boy band, so I'm going to call them the Incubi boys. Um, we finally got to meet them. Uh, we were kind of, you know, seduced <laughs> into kissing two of them so they could regain back some of their Incubi powers and not be bleeding on my entryway um and now we're going to go have dinner with them so that sounds fun let's do this mm, something smells good my stomach crumbled in agreement i was starving oh the girl's awake oh the douche is here he's the one that forced himself on me in the last episode i'm not a fan of you you're the like i get the archetype that they're going after he's like the like the the grumpy one with a heart of who secretly has a heart of gold, but I don't I don't really like this what they did with this version of I'm not a big fan of people who were just like kiss me without consent, and you shouldn't be a fan of those people either. And we're moving on. Excuse you, I have a name, you know. Should we really care? Fuck you, Sam. <laughs> Sam, I will roast that tongue for dinner if it doesn't stop flapping in that idiotic mouth of yours. <laughs> Whatever. I apologize for his attitude. It's fine. At least you're here now. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> Good. I hope you'll enjoy the meal we prepared for you. Oh, I will. I heard the dogs barking. Meal? For a second, my mind didn't understand what James meant. Maybe it was the doll getting to my head and distracting me. <laughs> Ah, that's right. Damien and Matthew mentioned that they were making dinner as an apology. This happened literally five minutes ago. <laughs> what are these demon powers doing to me? My memory is going <clears throat> out the window. Yay. Oh, wait. You didn't have to. We insist. Besides, it's quite impossible to undo our cooking, even if you command us to. Well, all right. Well, thank you. Matthew put down the last of the plates on the table and bowed a bit, exaggeratedly to me, gesturing to the table with a sweeping motion. Ah, there we go. Dinner's all served. The table was filled with various foods from an eclectic selection of cuisines. I like that illiterate eclectic selection. I'm going to have to use that at some point. One portion of the table was filled with elegantly plated Asian foods, and another portion with some yummy-looking desserts. And there were yet more and more plates that I could have possibly imagined. Whoa, that's a lot of food. And it all looks so good. We hope you enjoy it, my sweet. Hey, Eric. What, sweet, me? That's enough, Eric. Thanks, James. <laughs> You're no fun, James. I don't need to be fun, Eric. Miss, please follow me. We, oh, he's such a gentleman. And not like in the, like the fake, like, quote-unquote, nice guy gentlemanly way. Like, he's... Actually, very demure, and I am enjoying it. I didn't know what came over me, whether it was his whether it was his politeness or maybe his power, but I couldn't help but take his offered arm and stumble over my words like I was falling down a flight of stairs. James seemed very kind and intelligent, but aside from that, there was something that set him apart from his brothers. Not to mention he didn't really seem to hold much appreciation for them. Miss, uh. I have to ask. Why do you live alone? Because my dad sucks! Uh, well, it's kind of a long story. I'm all ears if you wish to tell. But you just had two of them. You know what? Sure. Might as well share my life story with these two. Sure. And to put it briefly, I just moved here today. That explains the luggage you brought in when you came through the front doors. By the way, we put your belongings in the room you were sleeping in. That seems to be the master bedroom, I believe. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks. This house is really big. I don't even think I explored the entirety of the, the estate when I was a child. You lived here before? Mm, no. Truth be told, this was my grandfather's house. I used to visit him all the time when I was younger. May I ask why you now live in your grandfather's house? Well, because he died and my dad sucks. <laughs> he actually passed away yesterday. I forgot that it was only yesterday. <laughs> so many things are happening in the span of 24 hours. It was bequeathed to me in his will, and I was sent to live here, whether I liked it or not. My condolences. It seems like you don't like the idea of living here. 
It's not that I don't like this house, or that I don't have fond memories of being here. It's just the implications that come with staying at this estate. It's kind of complicated to explain. How do you feel about it? <sighs> I think he likes me. I certainly wasn't expecting that question, but in a good way. It was different from what I had heard the entire day at school. I appreciated the fact that he was willing to listen. I felt angry. Sad, scared, and confused. It was hard picking up the different emotions that I'm feeling right now. I wish I was stronger. You don't have to be strong. What do you mean? I understand that you're going through a difficult time, so it's okay to feel those emotions. You don't have to be strong at all. Thank you. Uh, are you alright? There seems to be a small bruise on your cheek. Oh yeah, that's because my dad sucks. <laughs> God, okay, I'm going to stop. He caught me off guard with that comment. I thought no one would have noticed something as small as that. Uh oh, I'm, I'm fine. He stopped and leaned in close, a bit too close for comfort. Or maybe it was just me, inspecting my face. He was really quite tall, having to bend over so much just to look me straight in the face. Do I like him or is he just tall? <laughs> it was hard to look at him, especially when he was so close. After a few seconds, he straightened up and began walking again. <laughs> Well, if you're having any problems, I'm always here to listen. Ooh. Can you beat up my dad? <laughs> this is really kind of you to offer that. My pleasure. Here's your seat. Let me get your chair for you, lovely lady. Thanks. Oh, uh... Eric was very charming and his smile pulled at my heart. The way he kept flirting with me definitely designated him as the charmer of the demons. Yet there was a little distance in his eye. <gasps> He has a tragic backstory. By the way, I apologize for my behavior earlier. Stealing your second kiss like that. Aw, well thank you for apologizing. Huh? Oh yeah, and I didn't believe that they were inky, but... Girl. <laughs> it's fine. I guess, I mean, you didn't just get up and grab and kiss me for no reason. That, I fucked that I'm up. I'm not as forward, unlike Sam. <laughs> well, and... Nope, not gonna finish that thought. <laughs> Suddenly, Eric leaned in and whispered in my- What? I won't lie, though. <laughs> I enjoyed kissing you. You feel me melt in my arms. <laughs> that is like- you, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it on your end, but that was like right in my ears. I have like noise-canceling headphones on, and that was right in my ears. <laughs> that d It did weird things. <laughs> <laughs> I was torn between smacking him and trying to play it cool. I'm not gonna smack him. I'm done with smacking today. No more smack. <laughs> Be cool. You sure are quite the charmer. Yes, I am known for that. As much as I do appreciate the constant compliments, you don't have to keep talking to me like that. Like what? He batted his eyelid, <laughs> Just his eyelids, not his eyelashes. His eyelashes stayed perfectly where they were. As if he had no idea what I was talking about, and I couldn't help but laugh. Well, like you're trying to get into my pants half the time. I can assure you, I'm just a lover of beautiful women. Okay. Something tells me that there's more to it than that. Oh my god. I'm reading him like a goddamn book. <laughs> for, a mo <laughs> for a moment, he looked away, looking a losing a bit of his smile. Before I could question it, though, he turned back to me with a new teasing smile. Did you want there to be more? No! Yeah. What? I didn't want to hit him, but I didn't know how to react. So I couldn't look at him. I merely chuckled again. He merely chuckled again in my ear. <laughs> Sorry. You just look so cute when you're blushing. Oh, boy. You were, you were going to be who you. Who you. Hmm. <laughs> I felt my face heat up simply from his words. Then I felt Eric take my hand and kiss it gently. I oh. hope you'll enjoy dinner, however, my dear. Ha! Thanks, you. Thanks, you. Thanks, you. I thanks you. Boy, I drew my attention back to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared by the amount of food they made. Seeing my expression, Eric leaned forward and proudly smiled, gesturing to all of the dishes with a dramatic sweep of his arm. I made almost all of the dishes myself. Ooh. Humorously enough, Matthew looked at him with a shocked expression, as if he was betrayed. His face suddenly changed instantly to that of a frown. And I'm the Queen of the Nile! What's that supposed to mean? Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. 
It's you, James, and I, Matthew. Oh, boy. <laughs> Little boys will always make mistakes. Hey, don't be mean to him. He is just small boy. <laughs> Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably for siding with Eric, and he annoyedly swiveled back to Eric to confront him. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Well, you certainly don't act like it. Let's not fight. Don't don't be doing the fighting. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. Matthew seemed very much like a kid. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel like, in a way, he was much more mature than the others, especially Eric. Huh? Is something funny? <laughs> no, no, nothing at all. Thank you for the meal, all of you. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome, miss. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and out. Hmm, you are... <clears throat> Eric, knock it off! In agreement with Matthew, Sam cocked up his head and glared at Eric. Seriously. You're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. I look at you being all blunt and stuff. It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group. Bad, bad boy. Hit. <laughs> My voice isn't working. He had this big, tough act, and it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. Was it? Was it? His arms are very... His arms look to be... His his arms look to be about the same size as the others. I don't know why I keep slipping into Cockney. He had a big he had a big tough act, and it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. But was there more to him than that? I'm just trying to be a gentleman. The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. Thank you. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're going to need some cold water for that burn. <laughs> mm, Damien's is horrible. By the way, I don't believe we caught your name even though you know each of us. Oh yeah, huh? <laughs> That's kind of an important thing. All right. He Ah, uh, I'm Bunny. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Yeah, that's a nice name. Thank you. They were all comfortable around me, despite the awkward situation we were in. I guess it was as if it pool. Why can I not speak? Why does this keep happening to me? It was as if it were natural for them to be around humans. I guess that was just how Incubi worked. But I was so curious about one thing. Excuse me. <gasps> Music is happening. Dramatic moment. Oh my god. All at once, they looked at me. I didn't know why, but having all of them look at me made me feel kind of important. Like a queen or something. Just gonna put a little crown there. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still want to know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah, like being told that a bunch of incubi randomly appearing in your house was perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? What were you attacked by, you absolute douche? Now you're just being rude, Sam. I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? You showed up in my house, bloodied and broken, and then you tried to make out with me. No, I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently, we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of misfits. You mean, you mean like from the BBC show? Eep. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. Uh, it's fine, I guess. So you're all better now, right? Yup, all thanks to you. Aw, thanks. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful. We feed on sexual energy. Don't call me beautiful but while you're talking about this. we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. Even, even people who are asexual? I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power. It was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. Wait! Hang on! Hold up! Then you didn't have to kiss me? Screw you guys! 
This incubi intrigued me, but at the same time, I could almost hear a warning siren going off in my head. No, sirens are an entirely different species. They more are accustomed to the water, and they don't really feed off sexual energy. They just kind of use it against you, so you'll, like, drive your boat into rocks. Is there anything else you <laughs> wish to know? Well, what do you plan to do now? Yeah, what are we going to do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here, and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take them easily. Yeah, because you did such a good job last Not time. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. Yeah! At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there. They didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes. They probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They probably would cause chaos all over town. Or, on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be poked and prodded like lab frogs for research. That was even worse. But most of all, they reminded me of back then. <gasps> Flashback! <laughs> I was standing alone. The entire classroom was filled with laughter and chatter, but I stood in the midst of it all, quiet and alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such vibrancy. While I stood all alone there, I couldn't see color back then. It was very dull. On the plus side, I was engaged. Oh boy, I wasn't engaged in any of the drama that might have arisen, like scribbling on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It was kind of nice just standing back and watching things pass by and life go on. I had long before convinced myself that I preferred being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, "Yeah." I want to be alone. There's no one I like better than me, so I ought to spend more time with myself. But there was a certain bitterness that, coupled with being alone, made me feel so sad. There was a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize it at that moment. And even after that moment, my father, my mother, there was no one to turn to. I was so lonely. I have nobody for my own. I'm so lonely. That was so out of tune. I'm so sorry. That was when I decided right on it then. Who? I was going to see my grandfather. I didn't care what my f if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk my way over there and see what he had to say about it. I had never met... I had never met seen him before that. I had never met seen him before that. What better time to see him then? If no one else was going to help me with what I was feeling, I might as well have turned to him. So after school, I decided to walk there. I had no idea how to get there, and I was armed with only a scrap paper with the address scribbled on it. As a seven-year-old, I obviously had great ideas. I soon became lost, and like I always did when I felt lost, I just stood there on the sidewalk, back pressed up against the wall and eyes looking at the strangers passing by. And like always, people continued to pass by and life continued to go on. I was sadder than ever. I had ended up in the situation I was originally in, Nothing had changed. I thought that I was silly for even thinking that I could change things with my own hands. That was until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that you? <gasps> I looked up and saw an unfamiliar face, but it was obvious that whoever was talking to me knew who I was. And from that moment, things began to change. Life began moving its rusty joints, and I realized that things were moving along. Suddenly... I had become part of the crowd that moved like a blur past me. I was no longer someone who stood still and watched others hurry past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because the very person who found me that day was my grandfather. I had the opportunity to tell them, though, would I? Wait a minute, wait, I thought that I met Suzu and Naomi when I was in preschool. What happened to them? Did I not have them as friends when I was seven? Whatever, I'm reading too much into this. I wanted to, but I wasn't sure if it was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house wasn't exactly the living arrangement that I had imagined when I first moved in. There was the matter of making sure no one found out about their powers. Thinking about them as lab rats made my stomach queasy. Even if they passed for humans, how would I explain having guys living in my house? Imagine if my friends came over. 
He would practically think I was part of a harem or something. Honey, you're a protagonist in a dating sim. There, There is no escaping being part of a harem. Oh god, imagine if my parents came over. I think my mom would faint. Who knows what my dad would do? I think we'd have them arrested on the spot. I mean, they couldn't really do that since it's not their- it's not his house. And I'm legally an adult. So, fuck you, dad. Fuck you, dad. <laughs> oh, this was hard. Maybe I should have written out a pros and cons list before actually having made the decision. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. <laughs> Grandpa! It was strange that I had happened to remember what my grandfather said to me when I was little, but it did kind of make sense. They weren't in the same exact situation that I was in before, but I did want to help them out. I think it would ease my conscience and also make me a bit happy to give them help, as weird as that sounded. Clenching my hands into fists, I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, um, you could... What was that, lovely lady? Oh my god, Eric. <laughs> That is, uh... Spit it out already. Shut up, Sam. <laughs> you could stay with me here if you'd like. As soon- Whoa, they just popped it out of nowhere. <laughs> as soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads from my words. The silence in the air cut like a knife until I fo I finally speak up once more. <laughs> it seemed like you all needed needed a place to stay, and, well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed like it made sense. It was so quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking. Good move. Good strategy. Good good stuff. If you if you would like to stay here though, there are two things that I need all of you to follow. Yes. First of all, you can't use your powers to deliberately do something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, safe for enemies, but you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. You're saying more than two words. Oh god. Second, you have to help me run- Oh, fuck. Second, you have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so, yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. <laughs> we'll live here Sam's and train face. while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. Okay, you're making me feel weird about this. What? Are you serious? Yeah, you broke into my house and forced yourself upon me. The least you could do is, like, sweep the kitchen, you ass. Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in the bed for days. <laughs> they all seem to like the idea, except for Sam. And hey, I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were Incubi. It would be interesting having five guys help me... Oh, fuck. Help. It would be interesting having five guys help me with taking care of the house, given they would follow the rules I had just laid down. Fine! But we're not staying here forever. Only until we can beat up that group of punks. I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes! This is awesome! Also beautiful. If you need a bedfellow... Eric. Eric. Stop it. <laughs> um... Eric, knock it off. I was happy they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed my help and my want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Cool! Finally, I'm starving. Instantly, Matthew and James began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James' eye... Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James' eyes twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. So that... But I did. I merely smiled before I took some food for myself. And there was one piece of food that intrigued me and was barely touched by the boys. It looked like green pasta with shrimp all over it. Huh? What's this? That, miss, is a shrimp pesto dish. Pastas are my specialty, so I'm positive you'll enjoy it. Ew. I like pesto. 
I twirled some, I, twirl, I almost said I twirled some fork around my food. I twirled some around my fork and tried it. I could feel my senses open as my taste buds practically melted in, in delight at the taste. It was creamy and savory, almost impossible to describe. This is amazing. I'm glad you like it. At least someone here in the room has taste. Matthew and Sam glared at James before they continued to eat. I couldn't help but smile at the brotherly quarrel before eating the rest of the pasta on my plate. James seems to really hold high standards for his brothers, though it wasn't my place to question why. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange, eating with just guys, that they were enjoyable to, they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like part of their family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon disturbed. Uh, it's my mom, excuse me. Hello? Hey honey, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Uh, hi, Mom. Everything's fine. I'm actually eating dinner right now. Oh, good, good. So there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night to celebrate the new house and all. Excuse me? A house party? Tomorrow night? So soon? Your father insists. You know how he is with events. Oh, God. Fuck. I know exactly what she meant. He didn't like long, relaxing periods between important events. It was slightly, slightly messed up. <laughs> this, this is the man who planned and executed the funeral for his dead father the exact same day that he died. <laughs> this is, this is like he he needs Hims needs to go to therapy. <laughs> Hims needs a therapist. I was expected to act on the drop of a dime, from moving immediately the day after a funeral to my grandfather's house to now organizing a party. I know. Well, since I don't exactly have you two to help arrange it, I'm going to need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, Suzu and Naomi can help. I have work, and you know how your father is. A giant dick? I, I know. I have to do it myself. He won't help. I'm sure it'll be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. I have to plan a mansion party by myself. Thanks, Mom. All right, I gotta go. I love you, sweetie. I love you too, Mom. Great. Now how am I going to do this? Well, we're going to find out how you're going to do this on the next episode. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Um, Again, my upload schedule is going to be every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for all of my dating sim videos. So, um, yeah, keep yourself updated if you want to keep up with the series, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.